Right, welcome back to part two of the American Civil War battle in 6mm using uh, a modified Belusia set of rules. Now, um, I've been recently watched this morning actually, uh, my good buddy Curtis do another Belusia battle with his French and Russians. He used the um, Belusia cards. Well, obviously, there are no Belusia cards for the American Civil War, although. There is a template available that you can download and I, I could quite easily print off some um, cards and just use them as uh, uh, Union and Confederate cards for their armies. I mean, I could print them on blue for the Union and uh, grey or red for the uh, Rebels, so that won't be a problem. But having not done that yet, I thought, I don't want to use the um, micro dice on the table because you only have to look at them and they roll away and you, so you lose what, so I use them micro dice to, to, to um, keep a track of your LAN and um, you only have to look at them and they roll and so you forget I have to keep going back on the video to see what was showing was it a 5 or was it a 4 etc so I thought try and come up with a different method so I'm going to put a piece of card under each base it's the same size as the uh, the 60 by 30 base of uh, all the troops, apart from the obviously the generals and the uh, unlimbered cannon. So I thought, what this will serve is, rather than have the landmark on, I'll simply put, if this unit takes a hit, I'll simply put a cross on this strip and cavalry uh, in the uh, dismounted, mounted or dismounted cavalry in uh, the modified rules. They only have an elan of four. Um, so once it gets to four crosses, then that unit's destroyed. So I thought, well, if I'm going to do that, and you know I like to make a story to my battles and make it more personalised, I did a bit, me, a bit more research on the forces involved at Salem Church, which is the forces I'm using on this table, although it's in a fictitious battle. And I thought, well, I could actually make the card have just a little bit more information so for instance this is actually the third virginia cavalry which is part of Fitz fitzhugh lee's brigade so the whole cavalry regiment on this table brigade on this table is fitzhugh lee's brigade which is part of stewart's division so that now makes it more personal it's um, instead of saying this cavalry regiment i can now say the third virginia cavalry which i think sounds a lot better than just pointing and saying that regiment um and while i was at it i did the same for um let's just move it this way up a bit i did the same for the union side as well so for instance this cavalry unit i'm able to mark the land there and this is the 8th Illinois Cavalry. They are part of the 1st Brigade of the 1st Division of the Cavalry Corps. Cover it up, you can't see it. It's fine. And I've done it with all the other uh, regiments as well. It took a bit of research and a bit of writing on cards. But if, again, if I move you across here. I'll move you up right, for instance. Uh, here's uh, Brigadier Joseph Bartlett. I'm come on a little bit. So he's the second brigade, first division commander. So he's the commander of the second brigade. So I'm not. He's got a name now, and that card will stay with him. Here's his brigade behind him, and each one of them, each one of those five regiments, now has a card. It's 96 Pennsylvania, it's part of the 2nd Brigade, which is uh, Bartlett's Brigade, 2nd Brigade, 1st Division, and so on, the 121st New York. Now these are all real regiments, battalions, whatever you want to call them, that actually fought. So I suppose I, sh I should really give that proviso, they always put in films at any... any um, um, lateness or, you know, to persons living or dead is 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 um 
you know, is is uh, is a mistake. You know, it, it's not meant to portray any one person. But this obviously is. So, um, but these are just regiments. But taking that personal thing a little bit further, again on the table, um, we've got these farms and uh, let me tell you, I've got these farms and the hill. So I thought, again taking this, uh, making it a bit more personalised. Let's give these features a name. So let me introduce you to here. We've got. Uh, wrong way. We've got Payne's Hill. I was going to call it Pancake Hill, but Pancake's flat, and this is the highest point on the table, so it's now Payne's Hill. A bit further across. And we've got. Clay's Farm. So that farm in the centre is now Clay's Farm. Come back out again, move across to the ridge and uh, I don't think I'm causing any heresy by naming that Palmer's Ridge. So Palmer's Ridge now exists and finally if I swing over there with a huge great long name is, you might be able to see it, but we've got, we're on Ketteringham's Farm. So, well, people may or may not uh, have any uh, knowledge of these uh, people who gave their uh, names to various landmarks on the table. But, that's, uh, that's what I've done. So all the regiments now have, all the units now have um, proper names which took part in the actual, well, the Battle of Salem Church, not this battle, because it's fictitious as I keep saying, but uh, the table's now marked. Um, and all the units are marked, so I think that'll make it, well I don't think it'll make it more interesting and the use of cards now means I don't have to use um, micro dice on the table which is always a pain. See how it works, it may not work, it might be a lot of rubbish but it's a test so I don't mind if it is. Right, next thing is, is to tell you what's going on. Right, well I haven't thrown for initiative yet but let me just move the camera again. I should really turn it off, shouldn't I? And bring you back, but I'll let you see it all warts and all. I'm, I'm not bothered. Right. Over here, we've got a couple of units of Union Cavalry. A couple of regiments. As I said, we've got the 8th Illinois Cavalry. And also in the 1st Brigade is the 3rd Indiana Cavalry. They're ready to come onto the table at turn one. Over there, coming on at turn one, is. I'll have to come and have a look because I can't see myself from here. Is Brigadier, Brigadier General William Wofford and his brigade. Um, it consists of five. Um, Infantry regiments and a battery. And if I move the camera further along the table, right up to that end, in turn one, this unit, which is, again, I'll have to go and have a look, is Brigadier General Cadmus Wilcox's brigade. They'll come onto the table, and there's one, two, three, four, five regiments there, plus an artillery battery. So, depending on who gets the uh, the jump on turn one, of course the um, of course the let's come out a bit so I can see as well on the hill and in the farm. There's already the uh, the Confederate cavalry regiments, which of course have all got names now. Um, they're waiting. To, they've all come out the tents now. They've had the breakfast and uh, they're ready to move into uh, defensive positions. So we'll find out who gets the uh, initiative on the first turn. It will be a thirty-turn game, standard blue for a full day, and of course um, it will be the 
whoever holds all three objectives, the two farms and the hill, at the end of the 30th turn, unless of course one arm is being broken, which I'll show you this, we'll be camera again, and mouse scribbles again, um, uh, the value of research as well, when I was, um, I always check more than one source, so for the order of battle, to see if I had to make some amendments, um, so it, it ends up, it works out about there are, the confederates have a total of 24 infantry and 4 cav, which is 28, so half of that, I'm going to make it half rather than a third, the break, when they lose 14 units, the whole army breaks. Uh, the Union don't have 29 infantry, as I've thought before, they have actually 30, there's one extra, and they also have two cavalry, 32, giving a break of 16. Half it. Um, there's also extra artillery on from the original uh, list when I checked. The uh, Union don't have five, they have six, and the Confederates don't have four, they actually have six as well. And uh, they're back there with the uh, tags ready to go on and when they're placed on the board. Now, the dice here represent what turn they're going to come on. So, um, the first division will come on on turn two. The third division will come on on turn three. Um, same. Back over here to the um, Confederates. Uh, Mahone's Brigade and Sem's Brigade as will come on on turn two. And finally, I um, can't see his name, oh, Kershaw's Brigade will come on on turn three. So that's what will happen. That's the um, state of uh, proceedings at the moment. I'll turn you back and look again at the battlefield. And while you're here, why don't I just roll for initiative to see to see who's going to get the initiative then you'll know. So let's get my trusty dice. Where are they? There we are. Can you see that? Yes you can. See I was using these micro dice that was rolling all over the picking place. No good. So let's get them out of the way. It was one red dice, one blue dice. Blue. So the Union will have initiative in the first turn. So I'll be back to you shortly. One further point while I remember, someone asked me about the um, modifications to the Blue Shoe Rules for ACW. Um, most of these were on the um, on a website, Sam Mustafa's website, in the forum. And I took it basically from there. Um, Infantry, they all have a firepower trait and then they'll have six. Uh, you don't use prepared like you do in um, the Napoleonic version for cavalry because cavalry don't really figure in that now. Um, conscripts, well we ain't got no, no conscripts or anything. Oh, volley range is now two, two base widths as opposed to one in the Napoleonic version. Cavalry all have the mobile trait. The can't charge infantry or artillery in the front arcs, although they can from the flanks or the rear. All cavalry is rated as light with an Alan of 4. Uh, cavalry take a move to mount and dismount, and they do not have the firepower trait. All the artillery is has that rating 6, double 5, double 4, and 3. It fires 6 times. Um, all the units have the heavy trait. Short range is now three base whips. Any artillery taking two hits is silenced and needs to be rallied before it can fire again. Um, I haven't got any artillery officers on this uh, table at the moment, so I probably won't do that. If it takes two hits, it's going to be destroyed. You see here it mentions about artillery officers and what they can do. They can resupply or they can rally, etc. But they can only do one action. At, um, and you can use the shock steady and conscript depending on the scenario. Well, I'm not going to do that. I could do. I could 
go through all these regiments and say that they're, you know, the the elite troops, veterans, or the conscripts. But I'm I'm not for this battle. I'm I'm, I'm not going to make it any more complicated than I need to, because there is a lot of units going to be on the table. So that's basically uh, to answer that question. That's not a lot of differences in the rules uh, from the standard Blue rules. Okay, thank you. I'll speak to you again in a bit.